Hello, welcome to this new video series in which I'm going to try to find <laughs> the perfect guitar setup. Has every guitarist ever wanted anything other? Um, yeah, this is a lifelong journey, obviously. I don't think it's I don't think it's particularly unique to guitarists, but we are pretty infamous for uh, for always searching for the perfect tone, and I've certainly been doing it for 35 years. I'm going to basically start doing a little bit more science on it. Um, I've got my outboard sound gorgeous these days. I've got um, my Ibanez JS going into a Fender Twin, into a UA Aux, and then into the computer. And that combination of three pieces of kit gives me just the, the richest, creamiest bass sound upon which to work. But of course, once the sound gets into the computer, you want to play with it. You know, part of the fun of having access to all of these amazing tools is that we want to use them all. But the problem is that then you just end up with decision paralysis. You've got too many options. And so I'm embarking on this process to really find what works best in different scenarios. And my line of attack for this first video is to find a clean sound that does as little damage as possible to the gorgeous creamy sound coming out of my Fender amp. I want to get it into the computer, but I want to be able to do stuff once it's in there. Okay, so many, many researches later, um, I've managed to narrow it down to four contenders. Uh, and obviously this is a budget constrained thing. I can't buy all of the software. There's just too much of it. And so I've gone for four packages. I've got the Positive Grid um, Bias Suite, Amplitude, which is part of the IK Multimedia Suite, Native Instruments Guitar Rig, and the Plugin Alliance subscription bundle. So those are the four competitors gonna be duking it out for my affection. And what we're doing today is we're comparing clean orange amps. So the direction that I've chosen to take this thing is to find what's common between all four packages. And so that I've really got some kind of baseline against which to compare them all. Now, all of these products are fundamentally different. Some of them have like in-house room modelers, some of them don't. So I'm not going to attempt to compare apples with apples. That's not the point. But I want something approaching a level playing field so that at least I've got some chance to kind of identify the quality discrepancies between the various products. And they all do some sort of emulation of an orange amp. Now, obviously the simulators can only work with what they're given. So let's have a listen to the, uh, the raw sound coming straight into the, into the PC. So as I say, this is the Fender Twin into the UA Aux attenuator. And what I'm starting to do is build up a collection of library licks or riffs, or things that I want to use to, to stress various components of these systems. So this first um, little piece we've got over here Peggio thing. So that's the sound of my Fender amp pretty much straight into the computer via this um, via the attenuator. The second piece that I've got is um, these are all played solo by the way so they're not to a click track there's no rhythm um, against them at all I just basically played the lining and the second one is some sort of just noodling blues um, solo kind of thing. Now, the trick with this one is to hear that kind of thing. You know the, the strings just rubbing against the fret and the nuanced playing That the, amp that the simulators need to pick out. So this is really the touch um, sound. And then the third one is a jingly jangly kind of Smith sort of effect. Really simple. So I'm not remotely interested in winning any Guitarist of the Year awards. What I want to do is provide a really thick, healthy signal. I mean, you can see the size of these signals. I got them coming out of the amp nice and strong into the amp, into the computer, made sure that nothing was clipping, you know, I never hit zero. And so I've got these big, fat, healthy, um, reasonably well-played guitar lines by me. Don't pick up some kind of stock guitar sound out of, you know, a sample library. It's got to be you. This is what I sound like. And so I now want to put this sound through simulators to see 
and what it can what what they can do with it okay so having established our baseline we now bring our first competitor in so this is the positive grid orange amp and you can see that i've basically turned all of the fancy stuff off i'm not using guitar match which is really great and i'll have to do a separate thing on that one day I'm not using any other effects in the chain it's just the amp and the cabinet the cabinet's obviously matched to the amp where i've been given an option to choose microphones i've used the same combination of sm57 and r121 and so i've tried like i say wherever i've got the opportunity to make decisions i've made the same decisions in all cases but sometimes you don't get these decisions and so this is what the bias simulator stat sounds like <laughs> reason I've got insight over here is that I've painstakingly volume matched all four of these sounds so they are all to within 0.2 of a dB across the entire piece so I did um, a loudness an integrated loudness measurement across the whole thing so everything that you're going to hear is excruciatingly volume matched okay here's competitor number two so this is Amplitubes Orange AD30. Now the bias and amplitude are the only two of the four that have a direct AD30 simulator. The other two are as close as I could get. And the advantage that amplitude has got up its sleeve is that it's got a room modeler and I've chosen not to take it out. The simulators, if you're looking at Maybe you only have a budget to buy one simulator. Well, I don't want to arbitrarily take feature functionality out and say, you know, well, we're, we're trying to get all of these sounds absolutely identical. That is not my intention. I want to hear what the four packages can do. And the fact is that Amplitude has a room modeler, so I'm going to let it fly. It's also got the ability to pan the mics, which bias can't. So that's going to give it a kind of a stereo thickness as well. So it's immediately got an advantage. I really like the amplitude. It sounds very good. And this stuff is helping. I mean, there's no question about it. It is. So that's competitor number two. On to number three, Native Instruments Guitar Rig. Now, this is an approximation. Um, I've got a, an overdrive unit here, but it's not turned on. That's for the next episode. Um, so this is obviously Native Instruments emulation of the same product. And where again, wherever possible, I've tried to keep the controls as similar as possible, but there are differences. Gain bass middle treble presence master. And here we have a gain bass treble presence master, but no low cut, as opposed to uh, the orange on the amplitude, which doesn't have a presence, and it doesn't have a low cut. So that's kind of you know the 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 control lightest of them. Let's see what guitar rig sounds like. bit more nasal. And it's got a little bit more grit to it as well. The gain's turned down lower on this uh, model than either of the other two that we've previously listened to. And yet it's got that, that kind of grungy dirt to it. It's quite quite nasty but I'm not actually looking for that I really wanted a clean emulation and wasn't quite able to get it out of the um, out of guitar rig by the way um, I don't know I've, I've not been looking myself but if these numbers are different by the time it gets to each of the piece it's because don't forget I've done the integrated measurement against the entire piece and so if you've got different dynamics across these three different sounds you're going to get different numbers out so I like this it's 
the most idiosyncratic of the four sounds, um, which probably means it's the least faithful emulation. I've never owned an orange, but I, I suspect that it's probably gone its own way. But it's very nice. And finally, the Plugin Alliance offering. As I said, this isn't um, an AD30, but it's the only orange emulation you get in the um, Plugin Alliance bundle. <laughs> Quite bright, quite quite clear. I know I've said that a couple of times already, but it does bear it, um, mentioning again. There are so many sub options here. I could have gone for any of these two by twelve cabinets, and they all change the tone. So from a tone by tone perspective, it's just impossible to try to make them all match. I, and I don't see the point. Why would you want four things that sound the same? What I'm looking for is where do each of them shine? Now, the Plugin Alliance Orange has the advantage of having this. This is common to all of the um, amp simulators in the Brainworks um, kind of engine. We get to add this stuff to pretty much any of the uh, the amp simulators in the Plugin Alliance bundle, and they do sound amazing. They are really impressive. I was kind of hoping they wouldn't sound quite so good because I, I might be committed to a longer term subscription than I might have initially thought. But yeah, this is very, very nice sounding. So now that we've heard each of the four individually, um, I'll actually switch to a, a new thing so that we don't get completely sick of the same one being played over and over again. And I um, did a bit of child comparison on them. So we're looking at the positive grid here. And then we can compare it with amplitude. So we're going to see um, the positive grid EQ curve, the blue EQ curve dominant, and the amplitude curve behind. So anything that's poking up means that amplitude is louder. Uh, amplitude is louder in those uh, frequency ranges. Now what you'll find is this big chunk of bass. Now that's a little bit misleading, I think, because it helps to make the amplitude stuff sound better. But that's exactly where the bass drum and the bass guitar want to want to live. And so when we're actually mixing this stuff, we're likely to strip a lot of that away. And that's something to bear in mind that the amplitude with most of the settings between these two simulators really pretty much identical, it is much heavier in the bass department and so it's going to get some of that cut out and you can hear it when we AB between them. I mean it's just really really dominant. bias seems to be better defined in the bass region, I think. And there's the amplitude again. Let's compare the positive grid with guitar rig. So now we're seeing a the theme the bias is a little bit thinner generally. And there's that nasal quality of the guitar rig coming through. It's pretty much dominant in this 500 to 1.5k region. Switched over to the guitar rig to give us a different perspective. Now we'll compare this against Plugin Alliance. So you can see the guitar rig is quite thin in the bass end. Despite being almost maxed out. So it's not that I've cut the bass. It's just a natural feature. You can now, we're 
and much more, much more centered in the low mid. And the entire range, the NI is winning, or winning is the wrong word, isn't it? Let's head, head over to the um, the third loop. And we'll start with the plug-in alliance this time. Again, I've got the yellow drive turned on here, but it, it's not it's not engaged. We'll deal with overdrive um, next time. This is just the main amp. I think that's going to cut through the mix quite well. So if I want the chordy thing, then maybe this is my one of choice. The amplitude one is good. So I'll turn comparison off, get rid of that, and we'll just go through each of the four sounds on this chordy thing, and then we'll hear them side by side. The amplitude has that advantage of having the room modeling stuff just making it sound so much wider and spacious but unlucky for the rest the, the fact is that the um the amplitude package is an absolutely magnificent environment in which to work you get your your signal path it's very very comprehensive you can have it splitting off in multiple different directions all sorts of inserts and sends all over the place and at the end, we've got a, a pretty comprehensive room modeler. So in terms of the overall environment in which to have a guitar simulator, there's no question that Amplitube is the best featured of all of them. But we're really talking about the sounds here. I'm not doing functional deconstructions of tools. That's perhaps for another time. What I'm really doing is comparing the sounds. And the interesting thing is, that all of them have got strengths and weaknesses. I can imagine using each one of those four emulations in different circumstances. So it's nice to know that I've got those options available by deliberately not trying to make clones of these four things and get something that sounds identical. Like I said earlier, why the hell would I want to do that? I've got my gorgeous signal coming out of the Fender that's just so rich and capable. I can do anything I want to it. It's such a good, high quality and um, harmonically rich signal that I've really got, you know, th th there's, there are no doors closed to me. But for the time being, I want to try to keep it reasonably faithful to that. And I think the Orange is doing a really good job of just putting a little bit of its own personality over the top of my sound, but then saying, right, there you are. You are now in the box. Do whatever you want with this guitar simulation, you know, the amp simulator, the speaker cabs, mess around with them to the heart's content, move your, move your microphones wherever you want. All of that stuff is really interesting, but just for now, I want that stable foundation, and then I'm gonna start putting stuff on top of it. So as you saw earlier, the next thing that we'll be having a look at will be the overdrive options. And each of these four emulators have something approximating one of the Boss OD models, and we'll compare each of those in the next video and see if we can find a nice, rich, uh, thick overdrive sound to go on top of this. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please click the like button. I'll see you for the next one.